If there's one thing that the F1 sport is missing, that must be women. People seem to be stuck in the past, where women weren't allowed to live without any limitations, let alone race cars for a living. The last event that we saw a woman entering an F1 car was with Toto Wolff's wife, Susie Wolff, as she ran in the free practice training with Williams in 2014. The sport is in a very long drought when it comes to women competing professionally, more precisely since 1976, which is an issue that needs to be addressed immediately. But with such great athletes, how would women compete in the same machinery? We know that they are capable of racing and winning in other categories, but Formula 1 is a whole different category that we're talking about. Now we're close to seeing another woman in the sport, such as the case with Jamie Chadwick, who is absolutely destroying the Formula W competition. But is this achievable? And if it is, what does it mean for the F1 sport? At last, what's Jamie's opinion on the matter? Stick around with us to find out more. Let's take a trip to history and see what was women's involvement in the sport. As we mentioned earlier, the last time a woman competed professionally in the sport was in 1976 with Lella Lombardi being the woman who not only competed but also has a top 6 finish in a race at that time. This achievement was done at the 1975 Spanish GP, but she isn't the first and hopefully not the last woman that raced in an F1 car. Maria Teresa de Filippis is the first woman that raced in the sport back in 1958. However, society was really cruel when it came to women's rights back then as they believed that the only place that a woman should be back then was in the kitchen. This is why the race director at the time made a comment regarding Maria's involvement in the sport saying, the only helmet a woman should wear is the one at the hairdresser's. Apart from these two women, there have been a couple more that tried out their luck in the sport, but unfortunately, without any success. They are Davina Galissa from Great Britain, who not only is a former Olympian and a very successful athlete, but also teaches how to drive a racing car to this day, and Desiree Wilson, who to this day holds the most precious trophy when it comes to Formula 1 and women, winning an F1 race in Britain. The last one is Giovanna Armati, and with her, we circle the women that tried out in Formula 1, and unfortunately, their number is just 5. We said that there have been some tryouts with the sport to bring back women, but it's not as easy as it seems. First, it's a very requiring sport, and women's physiques would be put to a huge challenge when it comes to adapting to the sport. But it's not impossible, and the only case that we can compel at this time when it comes to their return to the sport is Jamie Chadwick. Sounds familiar? Well, she's the dominant force in the Formula W series, as she won the competition in 2019 and 2021, and she currently sits at 11 wins. What's even more impressive is that she won in the first year she sat in a Formula W car, something that hasn't been achieved even in Formula 1. Lewis Hamilton, the seven-time world champion and the ambassador of minorities in the sport and the world, has spoken about women entering an F1 car. He called for action in helping women progress through the ranks of motorsport as she has shown his support for the W Series during 2022. I've been following the W Series all year and for the last few years. I've been trying to get down there because I wanted to go and meet the young, inspirational women there. I've been watching the races in between sessions, so I really wanted to go down there," said Hamilton, who then continued, I feel it's great that we have the W Series, but we as a sport need to do way more for young girls getting into the sport. For these women, there's no progression from the W Series. It's been three years and we need to really, really work on trying to create something. When you win that, do you progress to Formula 2 or get a seat in F2, whatever it may be? We can definitely do a lot more to support those girls," said Hamilton. Earlier in 2022, Hamilton spoke about women's involvement in the sport as he said that the sport needs to be more engaging when it comes to this matter. This is why he called up for more women stewards in the sport, which is a step in the right direction to even bring the first woman F1 driver after 1976. Hamilton said, I want to see more women in the stewards' room. Last year, we had maybe one or two. It would be awesome to have a male and a female as the two race directors. I just want to add that we need to make sure we've got non-biased stewards. Race drivers, some are very, very good friends with certain individuals, some travel with some individuals, take a more keen liking to someone. I think F1 needs people who have no biases and are super central when it comes to making decisions." Finished Hamilton. Apart from him, Daniel Ricciardo has also called the sport out for not bringing enough women's involvement. 
One girl that has been really outstanding in the sport is Jamie Chadwick, as not only she won the competition on her first try in 2019, but she also won it last year. In this season, she is the clear favourite to win it again for the third time, which would only show that she is built for a future in F1. Jamie Chadwick hasn't remained immune to these talks, as she said that she would love to partner with Lewis Hamilton sometime soon in the future if she receives the chance to jump in an F1 car. In my opinion, Hamilton is the greatest of all time. I wouldn't say I'd beat him, but I'd love to go up against Lewis. He's incredible, and I think what he's achieved in the sport is amazing," said Chadwick. But according to Chadwick, there are some obstacles that women are experiencing when it comes to driving an F1 car, and one of those obstacles is their physiques. Apart from that, she said that her ultimate goal is joining the most elite competition, saying, The ultimate goal is to be in those championships, ideally Formula 2 and then Formula 1. I don't know what is actually possible. To get into Formula 1, you have to go through the feeder series, Formula 3 and Formula 2, and it's extremely physical. Formula 1 is extremely physical, and we don't know exactly what women are capable of in that sport. If you are aged 15 or 16 and go into car racing without power steering and driving big heavy cars, a lot of women do struggle, even though they have been successful in go-karting. We like to think that women can make it, and I'm happy to be the guinea pig and will do my best to push and explore the options to Formula 1, but we don't know. There hasn't been a woman in the recent era that has done it. I'm trying to understand whether that is to do with the physical side. If it's physically possible and women can compete against men, how do we make that happen? However, if it is physically too hard but the sport wants women to compete, then we've got to bring it back and understand why," said Chadwick, who is also a development driver for Williams. According to her, the technical regulations do need to be changed if the sport wants to see the return of female drivers in the sport. She believes that people that run the sport are misunderstanding the physical human performance or at least misunderstanding it, saying, I don't think it's just as straightforward as getting stronger in the gym and jumping in the car. Although our sport is incredibly advanced with a lot of things, the physical human performance side is misunderstood. In Formula 2 and Formula 3, the steering wheels are all identical and they have a thick grip. How can we make them thinner because women's hands are not necessarily that big? How can we make sure that there are no restrictions on how close the pedals are so you can get the right leverage? And some of the newer tubs in the cockpit are really narrow. Women with bigger hips can't fit into them comfortably. A lot of these things have been overlooked for obvious reasons, but now we need to see whether that does make a difference to performance. Finish Chadwick One could understand where she comes from, as fitting a woman in an F1 car could be a true challenge, especially now when the restrictions are so strong that F1 cars have to be identically the same when it comes to regulations. It's highly unlikable that the regulatory body of the sport will make such an attempt. At the end of the day, as Chadwick said, the physique of women and men isn't the same, and it wouldn't be fair to compare both of them in the same competition. F1 isn't the only sport in the world that is diverse when it comes to men's and women's performance. We've seen in basketball, football and rugby that the most dominant players are male. Not just that. If you compare the NBA and the WNBA, you'll notice the difference in the revenue between these two. The case is the same if you compare Formula 1 with any other competition in Formula, let alone the Formula W series. This is why people aren't understanding Formula W seriously and aren't accepting the full grasp of the competition, which could hurt women's chances of entering the highest categories. Chadwick finished a statement hopeful amid all of the controversies of seeing a woman race in the sport for the first time since 1976. I would like to think in the next three or four years we will see a female driver in F1. There is a lot of talent that is younger than me coming through that could have a great success, but there are details within the sport that have been a limiting factor previously. Trying to understand those and changing them, even if that is not for me, but the next generation coming through is going to be important," finished a 24-year-old Britain driver who has two championships behind her name at such a young age. What do you think is next for the Formula 1 sport? Do you think that we'll see a woman competing after such a long time, or do you believe the sport should remain as it is now? Let us know in the comments below.